Hello, my friends. Good morning. Happy Monday. Come on in. Come to, to the Bite of Bread. I'm Andy Lee. This is the Bite of Bread. It's a daily Bible study. We dig deep to live fully. Hi, Diana. Good morning. So glad to have you with me. You are number one today. You are the first one. Good to have you. So I've got my coffee. I hope you have your coffee. Have it poured. This is like number two or three for me. Get up early. So, a lot of coffee. Time for water, probably. Hey, Steve. Good morning. Good to see you. Tiffany, good morning. I loved what you wrote on Instagram. Amen. Amen. Proud of you, girl. Hey, Shelly. Good morning. Good to see you. I hope you all have your Bible, your journals. We are going to be drawing for the giveaway today for the Francis Frangipane book. This is the day we fight, so y'all don't let me forget to do that. I'll be doing that at the end of the broadcast. But before we get started, good morning, Heather. Look, I've got your mug this morning. I just love this mug. It's so pretty. Diana, it came from the mountains in North Carolina. I think maybe the Asheville area. Okay. Hey, Stephanie. Good morning. Good to see y'all. I am praying for y'all. Let me hold your hands and pray us up. This is good stuff. We're talking about grace this morning. And I don't know about y'all, but I always need grace. I need grace for just living, and I need grace to give grace. Amen. Anybody else? So hopefully this morning, we'll understand it a little bit more this week each day. Good morning, Bev. Good to see you. And Ellen, you too. Debbie Johnson, good morning. Okay, I got your hands. And I'm praying all up. You ready? Here we go. Father, we thank you for Mondays. Yes, Lord, we're going to thank you for Mondays. We thank you for the sun coming up today. We thank you for the breath in our lungs. We thank you that we have the word of God. And we thank you for Jesus and your grace. God, I just pray that today grace will go a little bit farther down into our spirits. That we'll have a, a deeper understanding of what your grace does is doing what it's accomplished what's it what it accomplishes in our lives every day that we would be um conduits of this grace that it would just go wherever we go as we are filled with it thank you jesus help me teach this today i pray for your grace to help me teach this scripture today we just love you, Lord. We are in love with you. It's in Jesus' holy name. By his authority, by his power, and by his grace, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, we're all prayed up. Hey, Marie, good morning. Good to see you. Pam, good morning. Kim, good to see you this morning. All right, guys, if you got your Bibles, Turning your Bible to Ephesians 2, verse 8. That's our scripture for today. Ephesians 2, verse 8. Every Sunday night, hey Robin, good morning. Every Sunday night, Monday morning, I have a brand new reading plan on my website. It's called wordsbyindylee.com. If you've not gone there, go there later and find it and print off the printable that I've made for you this week, it has all of the scriptures of the reading plan on it, plus prompts and questions to help you go deeper with God. But I wanted to read one thing that I wrote about grace on my website today. Good morning, Angela and Hannah. Good morning. So on my website, I wrote, that's the beautiful thing about grace, especially God's grace. God's grace removes the pressure to be good enough and kind enough and gentle enough and ballerina graceful enough. I always wanted to be full of grace and graceful and I flunked out of ballet when I was five. That just wasn't my thing. But God's grace says, I love you just the way you are. In God's grace, I am enough and you are enough. And when grace is given, well, it kind of rubs off. If you want to read more of that, go to wordsbyindylee.com later. But that's what grace is. Grace is God saying, you're enough. You're enough. Let's read Ephesians 2, verse 8. For it is by grace 
You have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. So I'm going to stop there. You want to keep on reading the whole thing because it's just all so good. But we're just going to chew on verse 8 this morning, and then we'll look at the context um, some more. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. Grace. The, the best way to remember what grace is, is it is a gift. Hi, Sam. Good morning. Good to see you and Cheryl. So, if you get confused with, like, what's the difference between grace and mercy? I mean, like, they're cousins. You know, they're hand in hand. But really, you've got to have grace to receive the mercy. So, mercy is not receiving punishment or you, that you deserve. That's mercy. Mercy also is, is helping and compassionate. But grace is needed before the mercy. So, grace is the gift. It's not anything we earn. In fact, the word for grace in the Greek is Charisse. Everybody say that. Charisse. Venus, good morning. And Linda, good to see you. Charisse. You've now said a Greek word this morning. Deb Warren, good morning. Charisse. That is the Greek word for grace. And it's really, really, really close to what we consider grace in our language. Charisse, it says, especially the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in life, including gratitude and acceptance and benefit and favor and pleasure. In fact, the Greek word for, or the, the root word for charisse means joy. And that which gives you joy, man, grace can give you joy, right? Just like, just a happiness about grace, a joy within that we received this favor. When somebody gives you grace, and let's just bring it down to our level. When you know you've messed up in somebody, whether it was a teacher at school or um, or a, a co-worker or a boss or a parent, they, you, you know you messed up, but they give you grace. They give you favor anyway. They give you another chance, right? That is that grace, and it just, whew, it just gives you peace. In fact, one of my good friends on my Instagram account said, Grace and peace both have A-C-E at the end. So to her, they go together. It's all about the, the master giving us this grace and peace. And so grace can give us that peace. You need some, need some peace? Well, you know, give somebody some grace. <laughs> and in grace, grace just has this way of giving us peace. So let's keep on going. So it's, um, grace is beautiful, right? Great. We think of grace as something that's graceful. It's beautiful, like a butterfly. It's full of grace. And a ballerina is, is beautiful. Grace is beautiful. Grace is gentle. It's gentle. Grace is one of those gentle things. I love it. I love if you think about any grace that's been given you, it's been gentle. It's been, there's a kindness about it, a gentleness about it. And there's, it's also life giving. Hi, Selena. Good morning. So grace is life giving. I just, I've always wanted to be this graceful, gracious person that was life giving everywhere I went. Not that I've done it. Well, in fact, the whole reason why this even became the bud bread this week is because yesterday I wasn't doing very well in the grace department. I was like struggling with something and like, you was really bothering me. And I thought, oh my gosh, I need grace. I need to give grace to this person. And because I felt that way, I thought I've got to do a Bible study on grace. So that's how that even happened. Go with me back to the word Ephesians 2. Let's go up to the context. Let's read verse 4, starting verse 4. But because of his great love for us, that's God's love. Because of his great love, everybody just say that for me, his great love. Because of his great love, and that word is agape. That's, you know, the Greek had different kinds of words for love. They had 
Filio, which was friendly love, eros, which is like the husband and wife love, and agape, which is this love that God has that, that does not expect anything in return that is deep, deep and, and amazing. So because of his great agape love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, rich in mercy, abundant in mercy. And we talked about mercy and grace going hand in hand, right? He's rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. We're talking about grace being life-giving. It made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace, it is by charisse, you have been saved. Y'all, that word saved, when we see that word saved, the, the Greek word is sozo, which does, it can mean to be delivered. It can mean to be saved, but it also has the meaning of being made whole, which I just love. This word sozo means he makes us whole. So not just this eternal salvation, that we have, but he makes us whole. He's making us whole while we are in this plan on this planet. I don't know about you, but before I came back to Christ, there was an empty spot in me. I was just empty. I needed him to fill me up, to make me whole. Jesus makes me complete. Anybody? You know, we think other people can make us complete, and humans cannot make us complete because they're human. <laughs> they're going to mess up. They're going to fail. But God himself makes us complete. He makes us whole. So that salvation, that sozo is a wholeness. It is by grace, by this gift of grace, this charis, you have been made whole Verse 6, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, take a breath, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ. Okay, what does this mean? He's saying that we, he says, we've already been raised up to the heavenly realms in the places next to Christ through his grace. Now, there's many ways I've looked at that before and tried to teach it before and study it before. You know, what I've really come to the conclusion is that it's been done. With grace, it's been done, and nothing can change his mind or take it away that we've already been placed in that position, seated in the heavenly thrones. Now, not literally, like, we are here, right? <laughs> We're here, but we've been seated in the heavenly realms. Um, it's not been done, but it, I mean, it has been done. It cannot be changed. Uh, there's nothing else needed. This is grace. It's already been done. You can't fall from it. You, you can't mess up. It is his choice to give us this grace, all we need to do is what it says to have faith, to trust him, to believe. Go with me, for it is for it is by grace you've been saved. Let me go back. He talks about being in Christ Jesus. He says in verse 7, He might show the incomparable riches of his grace, this abundance of his grace. Incomparable, there's nothing like it. Like, we can't really wrap our mind around it. Um, of His grace expressed in His kindness. Did you know that God is kind? What does your God look like when you close your eyes and you look at God? Is He like fire breathing and mad and angry? The New Testament shows us this kind God. It's the fulfillment of God's character. Jesus was the image of the invisible God. What did Jesus look like as he walked around? Now think of the kindness that he granted all those people around him and, and the people that he befriended. That is the grace of God in action as we study Jesus. And so he says that this is given to those in Christ, that those in Christ have been raised, have been placed already in those heavenly places. So what does it mean to be in Christ? That's where I started my study this morning. 
what does it mean to be in Christ? I mean, you know, I'm all about language and all about the words. And sometimes I get tripped up <laughs> with the words because I'm so literal with them. And I think that happens to us a lot in the Bible. We want to read it so literally in black and white and in our way that we get tripped up with it. But to be in Christ, this is something that I read by a man named J John R. Scott. He says, when we meet some people... We know immediately and instinctively that they are different. Do you know somebody like that? That they are different. It's not the way they talk or behave or name tag that they have. It's not their, um, their strict moral code. It's not that they, you know, that they are perfect in all they do. It's that that they know Jesus Christ and that he is a living reality to them. Is Jesus real to you? Is he a living reality to you? You know, when he is real to us, it changes us. When we are walking with him, we know Holy Spirit is talking to us. It's reality to us. He says, those people dwell in Jesus and he dwells in them. He is the source of their life, and it shows in everything they do. Now, this is a person who's in Christ. This is the person who, what it really means is dwells with Christ, lives with, with Christ, hangs out with Christ, and Christ is rubbing off and coming, just bubbling over because he's all around us and in us. To be in Christ is to be organically united to Christ. To, um, as a limb is in the body or a branch is in the tree. It is the personal relationship with Christ that is the distinctive mark of his followers. So we, I've said it before. I think I've said it here. Joyce Meyer, one of my, the favorite things I've heard her say is, you know, sitting in a church does not make us a Christian any more then sitting in a garage makes us a car. Amen? It doesn't happen. It's this relationship, just this, this walking every day, talking every day with Jesus, but being in his word and, and hearing his, his voice through his word as well as in our prayer time and having this dialogue not just a monologue. We talked about that a lot last week. How prayer, some of us see prayer as just this monologue and, you know, just kind of beating against the door. Which, you know, Jesus did give that parable about the woman keeping on knocking on the door. But it's this dialogue, too, with God. Just talking with Him. Walking with Him. Being with Him. And when we start doing that, man, we are just, we are in Christ seated in the heavenly thrones in Christ. This is grace. Let me read it for you. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. That word faith, my friends, is trusting. It's trusting him, trusting God's goodness and his kindness, trusting what he did with Jesus on the cross. We cannot earn salvation. That was the whole point. We can't earn it. They couldn't earn it. Um, Back then with the, with the law, way back thousands of years ago, they couldn't earn it then. They couldn't reach that righteousness then. But righteousness, right, is trusting God. And with that trust, we, are, we receive this grace and we are made whole. So then he says it's a gift of God. So I want to ask you, I want to ask you, have you opened the gift? Some of us have the gift like it's just sitting on the table. And we know it's there, but we're still trying to be good enough to get to open the gift. But that's, God doesn't work that way. It's the gift, and we just have to open the gift and receive His grace. We can't earn it. Look what the gift does. It says, he says, um, verse 8, For it's by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Verse 10, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works with God, prepared 
in advance for us to do, which God has prepared for us to do. So the good works we do are not going to get us into heaven. However, this grace is on us and the grace is given to us and makes us whole and saves us for eternity, lifts us up already in the heavenly realms. And from this flows these good works out of us that God has created us to do. We are his workmanship. We are his creation to be created to bless those around us and give good works to all those around us. That is, I love it. We don't even come up with our own good works. God has those good works for us to, to do. So, you know, wake up in the morning. Okay, Lord, what you want me to do today? What's the good work that you have for me to do? How can I bless somebody today? How can I give this gift of grace, this kindness and mercy that I have received? How do I pass it on to somebody today by his grace by his grace we have been given these good works to do it's like it's like being hired it's a be, like being hired for a position of a company that you know you don't really have the credentials to do that is grace like I know you, you didn't really do this and this and this but I'm gonna give you this favor and, and give you this position and give you this job that is grace that is grace because we get the job because why because we know the boss <laughs> right and just can we just put this in human terms grace is like going into an office and interviewing for a job that you're not qualified for but you get the job because you know the boss and the boss has all the the ability he's going to help you do what you need to do you believe in the boss and you trust the boss and you want to work for the boss and with the boss and that my friends is grace ah, isn't God good he's so faithful he's so kind and I hope as we study grace this week that it will just it will just Go a little bit deeper in this that we would understand what grace is. Real quickly, I want to read Jesus Calling and then I've got to draw a winner for this day we fight. So what is today? Today is the 23rd. Wow, October is just flying by, my friends. So October 23rd. This, um, oop, that's the 22nd. Let's read 23rd. As you turn your attention to me, feel the light of my presence shining upon you. Open your mind and heart to receive my heavenly smile of approval. My goodness, that is grace, my friends. Let my gold-tinged love wash over you and soak into the depths of your being. As you are increasingly filled with my being, you experience joyous union with me. There's that joy that the carice gives us, carice. I in you and you in me, your joy in me and my joy in you become intertwined and inseparable. I suffuse your soul with joy in my presence. At my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That we, thou, just praying that we would be aware of his presence, his grace on our lives and his presence in our life well let me pray us up and then i'm gonna draw for the winner lord we just thank you we praise you for your grace that it is by your grace that we are made whole lord i pray for more awareness of your presence of living with you your reality in our life that we would dwell in you in you and us and that would be the just experience of your grace and with that grace we would be able to give grace to those around us that we would walk in a room and somebody would say something is different about him something is different about her and it's not because we have a name tag on us that says christian it's not because we are perfect and and more morally and ethically just perfect perfect but that we are exuding the presence of Jesus and his grace. Oh, that we would be gracious and graceful um, to all around us. 
And thank you, Lord, for your spirit that empowers us. Thank you for this gift of grace. May we open it up today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Woof, woof, woof. Okay, are we ready? Are you ready, ready, ready? This is what I'm doing. I'm drawing for someone to win this book, their own book, because I'm keeping mine. So here we go. I'm going to draw everybody who shared and um, left a comment on my blog, received uh, their name got to go in the, the giveaway. So, okay, here we go. I'm drawing. And the winner is Debbie Johnson, who has to be one of the luckiest ladies I know because she's won many giveaways. Debbie, I may have to not let you be in the giveaway anymore. Anyway, so Debbie won. Yay, Debbie. You know what? I'm going to grab one more name because Debbie wins often. So, let's see who else can win today. Mm, Woohoo, she says. And the other winner is Venus Schrader. Hey, Venus, you won the book. Yay. So, y'all, thank y'all so much for joining me today. Go to wordsabyindialee.com and you can get the whole reading plan for today. Read my post about grace and get the printable for the week. I love you. God bless you. Go out there. Be a threat to the enemy. God has a plan and a purpose of eternal proportions for you today. And I bet you it has something to do with sharing the grace that's been given you. Love you a lot. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.